When you need to test the best, you need a first-class location. And for this year's Skinner's World Cup Retriever event, we are being spoilt rotten. We're in a beautiful corner of the Cordor estate near Inverness, mentioned in Shakespeare's Macbeth and internationally celebrated for its shooting and fishing and for the next two days its moors, rivers, forests, streams and woodlands with some fences and stone walls thrown in for good measure. They will test 15 teams from across Europe to the limit. You know, it's a massive competition. I mean, some of these po people are, you know, they must be mad to come this distance. I mean, they come colossal distances, drive here with their dogs. You know, they'll come a week in advance to train and practice before they get here. I mean, they're off their head, but in a good way, in a really good way. Um, so, oh God, but it, it's good for the sport. You know, the more people that we can encourage into gun dogs, the better. You know, and it keeps gun dogs as a breed strong. You know, and it pushes the standard higher and higher. And that's what the best thing about it is. For the opening ceremony, we are joined by Lord Cordor. Will Delamore presents him with a bottle of English whisky from a distillery close to the Skinner's Mill in Suffolk. Could this jeopardise any further visits? Possibly, but we can worry about that later. England, already ahead of Scotland and not a dummy has been launched. There are five layouts per day. Each retrieve is scored out of 20. On stage one, judged by Billy Steele Jr., there are two retrieves. The first is straight across the river and up the steep bank. The second, 200 metres to the left, but again, the river needs to be crossed. When Roddy Forbes set the course, the water was a lot higher, so the retrieves are not as energy sapping as they could have been, but the dogs still need to be super fit. We try to give them every possible test, all types of terrain, all types of cover, fences, walls, water, downhills at the angle, uphills at an angle, all that kind of stuff, just to find the best trained dog, but also the fittest dog. Tell me about your fitness test. Fitness test again, old Don McKenzie told me, in a sunny day he said you always like to be able to, if a dog turned sideways you could count its ribs with sunshine. And he said that's your dog's fit. You can't see the ribs on a sunny day, he, he's too fat. <laughs> Seen many fat dogs? No, not, not now. <laughs> From a pheasant drive to partridge to grouse, the terrain changes, and with it, the challenge. Here the dog has to do a blind retrieve over a fence and 300 metres away, high on a bank. Uh, this is the best competition uh, concerning the walking test, and this, this is the World Cup. So, and uh, every country sends the, the best dog, the four best dogs, and every year is very challenging, challenging rounds, test, and it's always the, a pleasure to, uh, to come here, yes. The tests are super, the, the grounds are difficult and the tests are very challenging, yes. Long distances, difficult grounds, very technical also, so you need to have good dogs, you need to handle well and, uh, and expect to, to, to retrieve all the dummies. Not easy all the time, but... From the dogs heading high, they now have to look low. The drop into the valley is perfect for the spectators and shows how adaptable these dogs need to be. At the end of the first day, the Danish team has a strong but not insurmountable lead. The standards are getting higher and higher. I think there's probably four teams that, that could, be, um, could be fighting for the honours tomorrow. In terms of top dogs and all of top dog, that, that still could be, could be anyone. So. But there's been a real mix of scores. There's been, I've seen a 40 and I've seen some zero. So a real mix right the way through. So you know, Roddy Forbes, uh, the estate um, shoot manager, set some absolutely fantastic tests, just we couldn't ask for any more, so it's been, yeah, it's been good so far. Our whole history from the early 70s has been working dog and, and shooting and shooting and supporting that industry and this is just further support um, for the sport, the sport of working tests grows and grows each year. Last year the championship was won by the Dutch team, but there are plenty hoping to deny them a second title on the bounce. There's plenty of passion and self-belief, otherwise what's the point? It's got to come from the heart, you've got to want it. You know, it's like any sport in life, if I pick up a, a golf club, I want to be the best with that golf club. You know, and you've got to have that willingness, you've got to want to be the best. Day two and we cross the estate to Broadleaf Woodland in the shadow of Cordor Castle. Again, Roddy emulates real case scenarios. 
The English team is pushing hard and catching the Danes. We catch up with the England captain Dave Latham and ask whether the dogs react to the big occasion. Without a shadow of doubt, dogs will come up two or three gears. You know, from what you'll get on your own, you're training, and they come here, they feel the pressure and excitement, and they love it. And they're that much more difficult to control, and especially at this distance, like me, I don't know, yesterday or well, we 300 metres, you know, without an exaggeration, wasn't it? You know, to keep your dog on the whistle. I think we're very fortunate with the weather. If, the, if it would have been windy and raining, you know, it would have been twice as difficult. You know, it's relatively quiet and still yesterday, wasn't it? So it was in our favour. You know, because at that distance into the wind would have been would have been difficult. Over the two days, even the uninitiated can see how different dogs react to obvious obstacles such as water or a jump. Those with a keener eye and ear can spot how the different nations use different techniques to get their dog to the dummy. Yeah, I mean, I've just watched a gentleman now like it, where I think some people step in very quick and want the dogs to run a tight line. Some of the people are very natural and they let the dogs go around the tree, but they trust the dogs and they come back and they end up in the area. But you know, where we'd be stopping our dogs and keeping them on a true line, which is what I think we should do. But yes, yeah, different different styles and variations. But you know, throughout the, throughout Europe, yeah, interesting. And the competition as a whole, is it something you look forward to? Is it? You know? Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, especially coming here to Corda, you know, I mean, where you can really stretch a dog to a limit, can't you? You know the water, the fences, the the, the the hills, and you know, and then now in woodland today, it's a, a different contrast again. It's yeah, fantastic. I think it's a hell of a journey. People are a bit worried at first, but I think they're all glad they've come, and I think people will love to come back, given the opportunity. After two days of hard competition, the results are in. Basking in beautiful Scottish sunshine, the Dowager Countess Cordor presents the trophies. First, it's the Top Dog Award, which goes to John Hendrickson from Denmark. Then for the teams. In third, it's the Dutch. Second comes the England team, making up huge ground to get within eight points of the winners, Denmark. Everything has gone to plan and Roddy can finally relax. His course has given these competitors plenty to think about and to work on. My son Fraser's very keen and he's head keeper here, grouse keeper and all his guys have bought into it, my, my lads have bought into it. All the loaders, pickers up have all been here helping throw dummies and steward and they've loved it. They're very proud of the place, do you know what I mean? It's a beautiful place and it's nice to show it off, it's nice to get a big crowd. It's nice to meet all the friends from Europe, you know, we're lucky to judge in, in Europe quite a bit. And, and Skinner's have been absolutely excellent. And, and most importantly, uh, Modern Lady Corner and the Dowager's Countess Corner let us come and use beautiful ground like this. For more information about Skinner's dog food range, go to skinnerspetfoods.co.uk.